today we have the Nomadic Cooling X2 uh, 48 volt air conditioner powered with an uh, EcoFlow advanced uh, 48 volt system. This 48 volt stainless steel grill is made right here in the US of A. And they have a stainless steel top. You can get it in either option. The nice thing about this top is it compacts if you're putting it in a small space. Now this works right in hand with the EcoFlow. It took us no more than 15 minutes to take this out of the box, get it set it up to the air conditioners with just an Anderson connector. They have these proprietary ports on the EcoFlow that allow you to either hook it up to 12, 24, or 48 volt right through the same system. I do want to share with you the one thing that I really like about the EcoFlow is how nice the touchscreen controller is, how easy it is to mount inside the vehicle, and then obviously the Bluetooth app as well. It's just easy to use. Complexity in your electrical system adds complexity into your life as well. This is the Nomadic Cooling X2. This is the Nomadic Cooling X3. It's really just here to show you the size difference between the X2 and the X3. The whole goal with the X2 was for the people that understand that an, a rooftop air conditioner on a 110 degree day is not gonna put it 60 degrees inside the vehicle. It's for people that already sort of travel without an AC and need cooling at night. The X2 is not powerful enough, in my humble opinion, to power the whole green machine. Just to sleep at night, the X2 is fine. You know, with the X2 and the X3, I can sleep in the green machine under the covers with a dog in a 100 degree night. No problem whatsoever. As you know, we always try to undersell our cooling capacity of all of our units. We don't want you leaving your dog or your pet inside of a vehicle on a 110 degree day because you simply have an AC. But I will tell you, look how small this air conditioner is compared to the X3. I mean, this thing is tiny. It is uh, the smallest, most compact, most powerful uh, air conditioner on the market and it still has our brushless fan on the inside. It still has a PWM uh, compressor on the inside and then it still has our uh, flush mount interior trim piece as well. So from the inside of the vehicle, you really can't tell if you have an X2 or an X3. It looks virtually the same. The big important thing is that if you're tall, it doesn't have a two to three inch drop on the inside. It's completely flush with your vehicle. Really the most important thing is we just want to share with you how easy this was to set up. These proprietary plugs that mount right here were actually uh, given to us from Camper Van HQ. So you can purchase these from Camper Van HQ. They're attached to the EcoFlow and basically these just pop right in for all of your ancillary appliances that you're going to use. Uh, the system here uh, has updates and so you wanna update your system as soon as you get it out of the box. But as mentioned earlier, setting this up was about 15 minutes worth of time. The nice thing is it does give you your available time till it's empty, both charging and uh, using it. Let's just show you how easy this is. There's a, a 48 volt uh, plug that attaches to the EcoFlow and it goes right in here into the X2. And I will just go ahead and turn the X2 on. Now this is high cool mode. What you're hearing is you're hearing the fan on top of the unit, not underneath. I know fans always sound louder on camera, but this, you don't hear this inside of your vehicle because it's outside the vehicle. If I go right here, we're at one hour of runtime with uh, a half charged battery, which means fully charged one of these two KW watt batteries will give us two hours of runtime. So right now the air conditioner has been put into eco mode, which will reduce the power consumption by about half. Now remember the air conditioners, the X2 and the X3, both use more power on a 100 degree day than on an 80 degree day. And all of that programming has a lot to do with the control panel, as well as just how air conditioners operate as well. You can see right here, it's gone from 15 amps in eco mode down to 11 amps, basically 12 amps right here. The important thing to note about the air conditioner is once the desired temperature is reached inside the vehicle, the air conditioner will start to throttle back and the compressor will turn off. 
it's constantly checking the temperature of the air coming into the vehicle and once it reaches the desired temperature, the compressor turns off. So at night, underneath your bed, although it says here on a half charge battery, we're at an hour and a half basically, you have to think you almost have to double that because it'll cool down the space and then it'll just start cycling on and off necessary to keep the desired temperature inside. This AC, when you're sleeping underneath it, you do not hear the compressor turn on and off. So the compressor is just turned off. The condenser fan is just turned off, but the interior fan is still running. So at night, because you don't hear this inside the vehicle, you do not hear what you hear with a traditional 110 air conditioner with the compressor turning on and off, on and off as you're sleeping. You can sleep under this. Because it uses the brushless fan, it should not disrupt your sleep. You can pare down the fan on the inside, which reduces the noise, but it doesn't reduce the cooling capacity of the air conditioner. Basically, what it does is reduce how far out the cold air will travel. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this back on. The compressor turns back on, and you'll see the amp draw slowly move up. We're at six amps, we're at seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And that'll start going up because it's a variable speed scroll compressor. And that thing goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down, no hard starts, no hard stops. I want people to see that it's at 15 amps right now. And then as I turn it into eco mode, all it does is slowly move down the speed of the compressor. Now when the compressor's running, the condenser fan runs as well. Obviously it runs an X2 48 volt, no problem. You can run an X2 12 volt, 24 volt on the back end of this EcoFlow as well. It really just depends on how you want to design your electrical system. But if we pay our attention over here to the grill, as you know, I'm a griller, okay? Let's go ahead and I just want to show people just really quickly how this, uh, this grill works. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so the grill is just turned on. Already hot, by the way. Let's take the temperature right now, Kenny. Already up to 94 degrees, okay, on the grill. We're gonna go for 180. Right now on the EcoFlow, this 48 volt grill uses double the amount of power as the X2. Right now it's at 26 amps at the 48 volt. So 26 amps right there, it's slowly gonna be going up and already at 100 degrees. The stainless steel grill, I wanna pull this off here for just a second and I wanna show you, I hope it's not hot already, but I kinda wanna show you everything that uh, this, check out how the inlay of this, how it goes around the coils. Okay, so this actually heats up the plate. This plate can go, none of us have dishwashers. I wouldn't put this in a dishwasher anyways, but this can be cleaned pretty easily. And this drip tray comes out for easy cleaning. One of the hardest things about living on the road is having a sink big enough to clean stuff like this, but this is pretty easy to pop out. And then you put this back in, you put this down, and you can store this anywhere. It's basically just a positive negative wire into a small Anderson connector, into another small Anderson connector that goes into the patented EcoFlow wire that we got from Camper Van HQ right into the device. There's nothing between these. This is not a 110 uh, grill. So the grill uses twice as much power as the X2. We've got the EcoFlow, uh, which will run this for about the X2 for about two and a half hours if it was fully charged. Uh, off this single battery. Uh, the grill runs for about an hour right on this, uh, this single battery as well. The electrical system that you pick for your off-grid vehicle is important and it really goes for what you're trying to accomplish. How much time off-grid? How much complexity do you want? As you're planning out your electrical system, you have choices right now between 12, 24, or 48. It seems like the industry as a whole is moving to this 48 volt system. 
What are some of the advantages of a 48 volt system? The biggest advantage is smaller wires. So you're gonna be running less amps through your wires. If you look at the wires behind me for the air conditioner, they're under two AWG. Everybody knows the sizing chart that's available on the website. What a lot of people don't remember is that sizing chart is based off nominal 78 degrees. So as the temperature goes up outside and the temperature goes up into your rig, I know a lot of people in the Phoenix area have seen interior rig temperatures over 130, 140 degrees, that wire gets hot. As you push electricity through the wire, it gets even hotter. As we reduce our amps, as you've seen with the X2, right about 15 amps max on this 48 volt system, we're reducing heat within the system and we're reducing the complexity of the system. That doesn't mean that 48 volt is better than 12 volt or 12 volt is better than 24. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your Overland rig. The X2, if you, if you are a proponent of massive amounts of solar on the roof, this gives you extra space for solar as well. That's one thing. The other thing to be completely understanding is the, the height of these units. The X2 and the X3 are under seven inches in height. This is really important. And I wanna explain this in two ways. Number one, if you have a Sprinter van and you have a 10 foot garage or any parking garage that's under 10 feet, you can't be any higher than seven inches if you have big tires and a lift kit. So that's our cutoff for how tall we can go with an air conditioner. Now the important thing to note is if you want more airflow and more cooling with an air conditioner, as you increase the height, we've seen a lot of these air conditioners out there that are 12 to 18 inches tall. Maybe the idea is as you increase the fan size, you can get more air through the system. The downside is you have 12 to 18 inches sticking up on your vehicle. As you reduce the size of the air conditioner, you have to increase the technology inside the air conditioner to compensate for the smaller size. You have to use the brushless fans. You have to use the pulse with modulated scroll compressors that add a little bit more complexity into the air conditioner itself. Now going back to a second, the advantages of the X2 and the X3 to competitors that are out in the market. Number one, we have all these parts on hand. If you ever need something, we have it. The other thing I'd like to know is all of the technology really is inside the control panel that is located not on the roof. On top of the roof, there is one relay and one fuse. We've done everything that we can do to limit the complexity that would make you need to go onto your roof to diagnose any problem. As we, do, as we reduce complexity from the outside of the air conditioner, we add it to the logic that's inside of the controller for the air conditioners, which means that if you need a replacement part, a new controller, anything like that, it's a quick, easy fix to swap out a controller if needed on the fly wherever you are in the world. Guys, thank you for watching this video. It's greatly appreciated. If you could just do me a favor, uh, Kenny, is this where I beg for comments? <laughs> it's cringeworthy, isn't it? I'm not above it, Kenny. Uh, if you could just do me a huge favor, and even if you want to put uh, in the comments that Kenny's not real, I'm okay with that. If you want to put a comment in there that uh, Roxy's a beautiful young lady, uh, I'm okay with that too. But any comment uh, in the algorithm uh, really helps us out. I'm not gonna ask you to like and subscribe though because that is super cringeworthy. Isn't it, Kenny? Yeah, we don't do that around. Okay, go ahead, like and subscribe. I need that, I need it to bust, boost up my morale. Anyways, I digress. Thank you for watching this video and I'm pleased to announce to you the brand new Nomadic Cooling X2 available in 12, 24, and 48 volts. And if you wanna uh, power it with a EcoFlow power system, I'll look into that. If you want to go further in comfort, go further with Nomadic Cooling.